everybody. Welcome back to the latest edition of Terrace Talk. Of course, quite a tight turnaround from last night's uh, defeat against Leicester at Carrow Road. A disappointing, I suppose, result, but, you know, I suppose lots of positives to take from the, from the performance heading down to Plymouth on, on Saturday. And with that, delighted to be joined by Chris from the Plymouth Live. He covers Plymouth down in that neck of the woods. Um, we're just going to start with last season, Chris, because you're now back in the championship for the first time since 2009, 2010. And it feels like last season was sort of such a positive season to be, uh, I suppose, associated with Plymouth, uh, winning the title against, you know, some pretty big sides in that division, you know, last season, likes of Bolton, Portsmouth, Ipswich, Sheffield Wednesday, I could go on. So what was that like for, for those involved in that last season? Well, first of all, Adam, thanks for the invite onto, onto the video chat here. Um, yeah, good to be able to talk to you about Argyle ahead of Norwich's trip to home park. Yeah, it was a fantastic season. You don't get too many campaigns where you get 101 points in a season. Argyle had 31 wins out of 46. And as you rightly say, there was some some real big hitters in the division um, last season. I'm sure Argyle had um, a few supporters among the Norwich fan base because uh, they were going up against Ipswich for, for the League One title. And obviously, uh, Barley Mumba was on loan at Argyle and did you know really well for for, for the team during the course of the season. So, um, yeah, it was a real tight battle. It was basically ended up being a three alls race between Argyle, Ipswich and Sheffield Wednesday. I think everyone would agree that Ipswich and Sheffield Wednesday are clubs with much bigger pedigree than Argyle. But um, so people were perhaps expecting them to drop away towards the end of the season, but uh, they didn't. They stuck at it. They won their last seven games to win the title by a, a couple of points from Ipswich. And, you know, looking back at the history over of, of Argyle, probably in the top three best ever seasons for them. It was um, it was superb, all all achieved under Stephen Schumacher, who has done a brilliant job at Argyle. Albeit the last couple of results haven't quite gone as I would have hoped, but generally speaking, it's been a a brilliant time for the club since uh, since he took charge. Yeah, following promotion, what, what was kind of the aim, I suppose, at the start of the campaign for, for Plymouth? Was it just survival or, or are you maybe, you know, pitching your hopes a little bit higher, maybe? Uh, the, the word out of the club was we're not just here to make up the numbers. We're not just looking to survive. Um, but I'm sure the objective is to survive. You know, anytime you get promoted up a division, the first objective is to make sure you don't go straight back down. It doesn't matter what division or any level of football you're at, does it really? The first objective is always going to be that. I think they just didn't want to come up and then just look as though they were happy to be in the championship. Um, and, you know, the only objective was to try and stay up and finish. And what would it be? 21st you know, keeps you up, doesn't it? So I think they would like to be, um, you know, the top of the bottom third, maybe something like that, maybe a bit, maybe a bit higher if, if all went well. Um, they started the season well, like I say, we can touch on in a minute. It hasn't gone so well the last, you know, few games. But um, I, yeah, I think the aim was that, yes, obviously it's a massive step up into the championship. They've seen that already in the games they've played, but they did get 101 points last season. They did play some good football and they are still playing some good football. So, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm optimistic that they'll have a decent season, although that might not be, you know, finishing mid-table necessarily. Yeah, 18th at the moment, two wins, one draw, four defeats. It feels like Home Park's probably the place where Plymouth are going to pick up most of their points this season. Um, what have you made to the start of the campaign? You mentioned the last few games haven't quite gone their way, a 4-1 defeat the other night uh, against Bristol City, but felt like maybe they rotated the squad quite heavily. So, yeah, what, what have you made of it so far? Has it kind of been a, lots of positives on the pitch, maybe even if the results recently haven't been uh, as, expect, as expected, I suppose? You're right about the home form, Adam. That's going to be absolutely crucial for them. Um, 20 wins out of 23 home league games last season. I've, I've never seen anything like it um, in my time watching football. They they just churned out win after win after win at home park, made it a real fortress. That's often a word used, isn't it, about home form, making your home ground a fortress. Well, it certainly was last season. And if they are going to have a good season in the Championship this season, they're going to have to do that. And They've had two wins from their first three home league games. They beat Huddersfield on the opening day and then they beat Blackburn as well. Lost 2-1 to Southampton, but that was a goal in the fourth minute of stoppage time at the end of the game. So the form at home has been good. Uh, away from home, um, one point from four games. And I think that's where they're finding, finding the fine margins between success and failure a little bit difficult to overcome. Um, conceded a very late goal at Birmingham when they lost 2-1. Then they went up to Preston last Saturday and um, Ryan Lowe's the manager at Preston who 
was the man that started Argyle on their upward journey from League Two into the Championship. He um, was obviously keen to beat Argyle with his new club and vice versa. And it was a very tight game. Uh, Preston scored twice uh, in the first 25 minutes and looked as though they were going to go on and win fairly easily. But Argyle battled back really well, got back to 2-1 on the hour mark. And I think most people inside the ground, Argyle and Preston fans, would have thought that Argyle at that stage would go on and at least draw, maybe not win it. They they really had a strong second half, couldn't quite get the goal to get back on level terms, though. So although it was a 2-1 defeat, I mean, wasn't too much disappointed because the performance was there. Chances were created, the performance was there. Tuesday night at Bristol City, though, yeah, not so good at all. Um, as you touched on, um, Stephen Shoemaker made seven changes. The idea was that they're playing three games in eight days. Two of them are away from home at Preston and Bristol City. They didn't get back from Preston until midnight on Saturday night, Sunday morning. I think he was just thinking we've got another game against Norwich on Saturday at Home Park. And he was trying to use the squad to um, to keep people as fresh as possible for this three games in eight days. It backfired, though. Um, uh, a lot of the key players were rested. Um, Argyle were 2-0 down in eight minutes. And they just never, never looked like coming back, really, after that. Were beaten 4-1, well beaten in the end. And, um, yeah, the, it, 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 was, it was... There's not been many poor nights for Argyle under Stephen Schumacher, but that was a really poor night. Yeah, he spoke about the rotation there. I know in the uh, summer transfer window that's just gone, lots of business in and out. But a lot of the players that maybe were here last season, you converted the loans into permanence. Of course, one of those is a Norwich City or former Norwich City player now, Barley Mumba. Um, what have you made of the, the transfer business that Plymouth have done? I mean, it's kind of been, I suppose, applauded by a lot of uh, opposition fans, the likes of, you know, lots of young talent that maybe can develop and, and be a you know, sort of prominent for, for Plymouth in the future. So have they all settled in quite well? And we'll touch on Barley Mumba in just a moment but he's yeah. uh, one that I suppose will be one to look out for on Saturday. Yeah, they've tried the try before you buy it, the signings, Adam, you know, with uh, lots of loan signings that they've made. And they, they had six loan signings last season and three of them have uh, returned to the club for this season. Morgan Whitaker and Barley Mumba on permanent transfers and Finn as a midfielder from Aston Villa who's come back for another season on loan. So... Uh, that's a tactic that Argyle are going to have to use in the transfer market. They, they're, they're going to have nowhere near the resources of some of the bigger hitters in, in the division, you know, and, and I would include the likes of Norwich in that, you know, when you've been in the Premier League in recent seasons, you're going to have built up, uh, uh, you know, some resources and, and what have you that Argyle can only dream of. So they're going, they, they can't afford to buy proven championship players. So the, the, the approach they're taking is talented young players from higher division clubs, who they can develop, um, improve, get quality that they might not be able to afford financially themselves. And then if it does go well, and those players aren't going to make the breakthrough in the Premier League, then Argyle have got a really good position to try and persuade Morgan Whitaker, Barley Mumba, people like that. And there's a couple of examples already, I think, shaping up for this season. Well, you know the club, you know the setup, you know the manager. It, it, if, if, if you're not going to make it at your parent club, come to us. So um, that's what they're trying to do with the transfers. On the whole, I would say they've 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 worked pretty well. Um, there's still one or two that haven't quite found their feet and haven't quite made a mark yet. But, um, you know, just talking on the loan sign, is, is, there's a young fullback who, who reminds me a little bit of Barley Mumba called Kane Kessler Hayden, who they've got on loan from Aston Villa. He's only 20. Um, he was signed as a right back. He's played quite a few games at left back this season because Argyle have had one or two issues there. But he, he looks a really good prospect. Now, whether he's a Premier League prospect in the future, I don't know, but he looks a really good player. And maybe he's the sort of player that Argyle need to keep trying to identify, bring to the club. And if he stays for a season and then he goes back to play and plays for Villa, good luck to him. But if he does well for Argyle and then he ends up maybe signing for them, then they've strengthened their squad. That's the sort of approach that they're um, trying to take in the transfer market. Of course, they had that approach with Barley Mumba. Lots of disappointment around Carroll Road when maybe that news that he was departing to Plymouth on a permanent deal was announced. Um, I think lots of fans felt that he could have been a player that influenced David Wagner's team this year. That wasn't to be the case. A £1 million move to, to Plymouth. Um, one, how loved is he down in Plymouth? It feels like for, from taking a gauge on social media that he, he's you know a big fan's favourite down there. But 
a lot. Yeah, I yeah. thought that might be the case. Yeah. <laughs> um, and two, how's he adapted to Championship life? I mean, I, I think it was a goal, wasn't it, on the opening day of the season? But I've, I've not seen him on the score sheet since. So has it maybe been a little bit more quiet recently? Um, maybe a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I think the team, the last couple of games as we touched on earlier, Adam, you know, the, the, the results haven't gone gone their way sort of thing. Um, I do think at home, though, they, they will be pretty strong at home. And that's where we might see Bali and, and people like that make um, make more of an impact, maybe. Uh, the thing that interests, interests me about Bali, you're looking from afar. I'm in Devon, you're in Norfolk, so we're, we are afar. But it seems to me that Norwich seem to regard Barley as just a, a right back um, and, and not really anything else. And to me, one of his strengths is his versatility. Um, yes, he can play right back, but he played for Argyle last season as a right wing back and a left wing back. In this season, in Stephen Schumacher's new um, formation that he's employed for most games, which is 4-3-3, he's actually been playing on the left of the front three with Ryan Hardy in the centre and Morgan Whitaker on the right. And in, in that position, you can exploit his pace, the, his desire to run at opposition players and get crosses in the box, which are all of his strengths. And obviously, perhaps defensively, that is an area that if he plays at fullback, it's an, it is maybe a concern. And they they've, I, I think they're getting him quite a bit out of him, particularly at home, playing almost as a winger up, up, up front on the left. And... Um, yeah, I think his versati versatility is going to be really important for Argyle. I mean, on Tuesday night at Bristol City, when it was all changing and subs were coming and going, he did end up going back to, to right back. You know, So um, he's versatile, he's young, he's quick, he's dynamic. The fans love him. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, what's not to like from their point of view? Yeah, so a little bit of disappointment, I think, in the Norwich ends that that deal uh, was done eventually. But um, lots of other connections as well between the two sides. Ashley Barnes and Ben Gibson, both former Pilgrims. Yes. And, of course, Saxon Early, a former Norwich youth product as well, uh, joined Plymouth on a, on a permanent deal there last was it January time, I believe. Um, what January, have you made yeah. of him as well? Um, has, he, has he done relatively well at Plymouth? I think he scored a goal quite early on in his spell there, but maybe not seen him sort of in the in the news quite as much recently. Well, he's injured, unfortunately, at the moment, Adam. That's he's been a little bit unlucky with injuries. And it, when he signed in January, um, Argo were on a good run, and it was a little bit difficult for a young player to sort of force his way into the team when things were going so well. Um, he did have a good pre-season for Argyle. It looked quite promising for him. Um, as I say, you know, Argyle are playing a four-three-three, so it looked like he was going to be able to nail down the the left back spot. Played really well at Watford in the first away game of the season, a nil-nil draw, got man of the match. And you thought, yeah, this is this is just the sort of start to the season he wanted. And then, unfortunately, he picked up a, an ankle injury in training the following week. And uh, that's going to keep him out for around about three months, by the sound of it. So um, he just broken in, broke in into the first team and then uh, finds himself out of it. Must, must be really disappointing and frustrating for him. I mean, he's young. His time will come again. And at least he's got that game under his belt against Watford where he played really well. So he knows he can do it. But, um, yeah, disappointing that he couldn't get in. I mean, you touch on Ashley Barnes. He made his league debut, um, football league debut for Argyle. They signed him for a, from a team down in the southwest called Poulton Ro Rovers when Ian Holloway was the manager. And um, he was quite a young, raw lad at the time. But Ian Holloway used him as a striker quite a bit in the championship when when and when Ian was the manager here. Um didn't score many goals, was more of a, a leading the line type of player. But um, so he's one that Argyle have always kept their eyes on over the years. He left then to go to Brighton. I think it was about 2010, something like that, off, off the top of my head. And um, clearly he's gone on to have a, an excellent career. And Ben Gibson was um, a young defender who Argyle signed. They were in lead two. They were in administration. Uh, they were in a terrible, terrible way at the time, really bad times. And he was a young Young lad from Middlesbrough, I think it was. He, Argyle signed him on loan, and uh, he was one of a number of young lads who came into a team that was really struggling. You could see he had ability, um, but it was in a <laughs> very difficult circumstances. I'm sure when he comes back to Home Park on um, Saturday, he'll be amazed by the uh, the changes that have happened in the you know around about ten years since he was last uh, at the club. Yeah, it'd be a big blow for, for Ashley Barnes. Got injured last night, suspected lead. Well, did he? Uh, yeah, knee ligament damage. So uh, he's going to be out for a little while, which uh, I'm sure... I didn't know was, that. Yeah, it'd be that quite disappointing. Him down here, yeah, yeah um, big blow for him. But 
just intrigued to get your thoughts on Norwich and, and where you maybe place them in the championship this season. Of course, a uh, quite a competitive league on paper and a relatively positive start, you know, defeat last night against Leicester and a defeat against Rotherham, but lots of other positive results in and amongst that currently in the top six. So where do you maybe place Norwich in, in your championship predictions this season? Well, you just told me about Ashley Barnes and that, that that's not good news for Norwich, is it? But I, 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 from what I know of the squad and from what I've seen from afar, they're, they're, they're going to be up there. Of course they are. Um, they've lost it. At Leicester. I didn't see the game, to be honest, but the way Leicester have started the season with the quality of the attacking players that they have, they look pretty strong for one of the top two places, don't they? Um, from from what I've seen, I, you know, Dewsbury Hall, for example, is probably not like a household name, but I think in the championship he could do some serious damage, couldn't he? Um, but no, I, I would expect Norwich to be right up there. It looks as though they've got strength, you know, from goalkeeper all the way through. Um, home form is normally pretty good at, at Carrow Rose, certainly when the, um, the club have been in the championship. Um I think Leicester are going to be top two and then it's who finishes with them and who's in the playoffs. And I would expect Norwich to be in, in that picture, um, no doubt at all. Um, yeah, a good, good manager. I think it, yeah, you've been up and down a little bit, as as, as you know. I, I can't see any reason why that, that won't continue. Um, you know, hopefully the next time you, you go up, you stay up. But um, I think it's got to help, hasn't it, at being at a club where you know that despite the ups and downs that when Norwich are in the championship, you know what to do to be successful. You know, you don't have to prove it to yourself. You know, you can be successful. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think Plymouth, uh, you know, they'll hopefully be, you know, sort of pushing. We're going to be trying to look, Argyle are now trying to make the transition from League One to the championship and they've played well, but when you're in the championship, if you make any slips, any mistakes, if you're not quite switched on, if you're not concentrating in the 95th minute, it will cost you. If you're not concentrating yeah. in the first minute, it will cost you. And and they are learning what it's like to be in the championship. Norwich know what it's like to be in the championship and been there, done it, got the T-shirt. So, Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's just hard on Saturday because, like I say, the home form has been really good. Yeah. Um, how can they cope, though, against a proven, proven championship side in Norwich City? It'll be, it'll be a good test for them. Yeah, exactly. I think even Norwich feel like it's going to be a good test on Saturday, travelling yeah, to a, a place. I think it'll be a good game. I'll, I'll go play a, a good attacking style of football. I don't expect that to change. So, um, you know, I'm terrible at predictions, but I'd expect there to be goals. I'd be surprised if there wasn't. Yeah, just in terms of a, approach, I suppose, from, from Stephen Schumacher on Saturday, how will he sort of, you know, set up? I mean, you spoke about the changes there against Bristol. Do you expect a lot of the, the key men to, to come back in for this one? Yes, I think that was, that was the main idea of making the changes was that... Uh, None of Mumba, Whitaker, and Hardy started at Bristol City, although they all came on as subs, but none of them started. I'd expect the three of them to come straight back in, for example. So, um, yeah, there were seven changes against Bristol City. It's quite possible they have another seven on Saturday. Um, the approach will, you know, Stephen Schumacher wants to play, you know, out from the back, attractive, attacking football. They did concede in the first 40 seconds at Preston last Saturday, and then they were 2 0 down in eight minutes against. Bristol City on Tuesday. So you would imagine there's going to be clear emphasis on let's start the game properly. Don't concede any goals in this game. Don't give it Norwich any early head starts. So they could be a little bit more cautious than you than we've got used to seeing them from, um, from them at home park. Um, and maybe trying to get into the first 10, 15 minutes, make sure it's nil-nil after that, and then work their way into the game. They won't want to concede an early goal again for the for the third game in a week. Yeah, and I'm going to put you on the spot. You spoke about there not not really being keen on score oh, predictions. I'm in, terrible. Uh, yeah, I'm going to ask you for one. Um, I will go for an well, yeah, an exciting two-two. Yeah, I can, I can see that. I think there'll be goals in this one. Norwich, are, you know, free flowing yeah. in terms of the goals at the moment, but maybe a little bit leaky at the back. So uh, there's definitely going to be an opportunity there for for Plymouth, particularly on their on the home patch. Um, that will round it off. Really do appreciate your time this morning, Chris. Um, thanks for for joining me. Um, that will round off 
this week's Terrace Talk, lots of great content across our channel up and coming. Uh, there'll be a preview show with me and Sam a little bit later on live. So any comments or questions, you can come and come and ask us. Uh, we'll be speaking to David Wagner tomorrow morning at 10.30 a.m. I think he wanted his press conference at three o'clock, but we were, we all quickly spoke about uh, the long travel that was facing us tomorrow afternoon. So uh, that's been switched to 10.30. So that'll be full and uh, you know available to you on our YouTube channel. So you can head there to, to hear his thoughts tomorrow morning ahead of this one. Um, should be a really good game. Really looking forward to it. If you're making the, the long trip to Plymouth, then uh, safe safe trip down there. Bring the noise and hopefully you're rewarded with, with, with you know, three points for, for that, making that uh, that really, really long journey. And with that, that'll round off the show. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see you at Home Park on Saturday afternoon. Oh!